Hi guys, sorry about the unexpected cut right over there. My parents just came home, right? I was about to explain um, the street performing, what it's street performing was like before I went to the Seattle Center. So like I mentioned before, uh, when you travel around the Pike Place Market, you'll notice that there are lots of buskers there, lots of street performers. And if you take a closer look, like if you look down at their feet or down at their setup, you will notice there's a musical, like a red colored musical note that's painted on the ground. Um, if you see like a painted red musical note anywhere within the market, that is the designated busking spots for uh, street performers in the market, only for the ones that have the permit. So uh, there are some that do get away uh, without the permit, but it's highly suggested that you don't do that because you could get kicked out of the market. You know, unless you buy a permit and then now you're allowed to street perform. But that's it. Those are the only um, designated spots. You can't play, you know, outside of the red music note, whatever. And um, as I was mentioning before, they have certain rules and restrictions in the market. Number one, of course, is uh, no electric instruments and no amps allowed. Not even that small speaker that I showed you would cut it. Um, number two is you have a one hour limit for that, whichever particular spot you're on. Unless, um, if no one like signs up ahead of time, like they just take a piece of tape and they write their name on Sharpie marker and they place it on the wall right by where that, um, music note is. If no one's marked up for that area and if you're still there, then you might as well just keep going. That's what happened to me one time on Christmas Eve of 2000, pretty much like, oh no, it was last, last year. Good God, I didn't realize how much time went by. Christmas Eve of 2017, on a Sunday, I was set up on the intersection of First Avenue and Pike Street, and the part of the Pike Place Market, I think uh, the building itself is called the Corner Market, and... Specifically where I'm at, it is outside of a bookstore and right by a flower shop and right by the corner produce where they sell all sorts of like fruits and vegetables. But there is one particular spot that is the most competitive. It is when you walk to the market uh, on down Pike Street, you will see the big sign um, that says the, the uh, public market and it's got that big clock. Right by there is a busking spot. It's um, the place where people will throw fish and it's right by like a small bakery as well. That is the most competitive spot uh, guaranteed when I was street performing over there. By the time I got there at 10 in the morning, already there's like uh, three different people signed up, maybe even four people signed up. So that just shows how many people are wanting that spot so bad. Third rule is, if you mark up in uh, one area, like in one spot, then you are not allowed to. Then you're not allowed to play anywhere else within the market until you're done with this spot. It's going to sound really, really confusing, but this is a thing in the market that's highly um, discouraged called double marking. What that means is. You know, you mark ahead of time. Let's say you have to wait three hours for this spot, and then you, um, it's like uh, 10 in the morning, and you have to wait until 1 p.m. for that spot. So 10, that's a three hour wait. So you think, oh, okay, I, uh, since I have to wait three hours, then, you know, I'll just go to an area where it's not marked, and then I can play there. Nope, that's not allowed, sadly. It's still double marking. Um,. And of course, you know, writing your name and then placing it here at this time, and then you write your name over there and place it at that time, and then write your name over there and then place it at that time. That is also double marking. I think they uh, did that in order to prevent people from being greedy with a spot so everyone can have a fair shot. You know, that also goes along with the one hour limit. If people uh, mark up after you, then you have to definitely limit one hour. Um, another big rule. There are some rules when it comes to how many members are in the group as well, or like the max amount of people in the group. And the red music note that's on the ground showing the busking spot is they have a white number, and that number can range from one to four, one being the, um, the max amount of person or people that can play there is only one person. And then some areas, there's a number four, so that means 
my foreign group can be allowed. And I have seen some groups uh, end up getting away with five people, but that's not allowed. So I would just suggest not um, taking that chance and then just only follow the rules and then, you know, just be respectful of other people. <clears throat> if I can think of another major, major rule, um, there's like pretty much small rules in my opinion, that's sort of like bullshit. Like, if you arrive at the market first, like, there, there are some times where I arrived at the Pike Place market at 7 in the morning, and I thought, ooh, okay, so since I'm here super early in the morning, this means I get to choose what time I want to play at the market. Because um, if I signed up for 9 in the morning, not many people are going to be at the market uh, to, to pass by you, and you probably won't make us a as much money and then so I'm like okay so I'll sign up for 10 o'clock instead so then before that then I'll go down to the metro tunnel and then play there or sometimes even done like 11 yeah I'll do like 11 sometimes 12 I think I'm not sure if I've ever done 12 but I think like you know I can mark my time ahead of time and then go down there and then I done that a few times and then there was one street performer that you know wasn't angry at me um, or not really like telling me off, but just uh, warning me that that is something that, you know, can't be done. You can't do that because there are some buskers over there that will uh, rip out the tape and then they'll end up playing over there. And then that messes up everyone else's schedule who uh, pretty much already marked up over there. It's just all sorts of bull, in my opinion, just bullshit. That's why I love the Seattle Center so much better, because you can um, first come, first serve, and except for one area, this one area, me and this other person, we pretty much like own the spot. So therefore, um, oh man, I'm going all over the place. Market. So therefore, I play, you know, I started off in either University Street Station or Westlake Station, and then by the time I'm done with either one of the places, then I walk a few blocks until I get to the market, and then I start playing um, at the clock spot. Before, I used to play on 1st Avenue and Pike, which is right by the bookstore, because I thought that I wouldn't do too good in the clock, because I'm only one person with just uh, acoustic violin, and that the people throwing the fishes are gonna like be very very distractive because that's where a lot of people gather up mostly and a lot of people pass by me uh hardly give a fuck what i do so i thought it wouldn't do good and then i tried out the clock and it turns out it was so much better than expected now as you know i play lots of lindsey sterling songs but when i was at the market video game soundtracks were was such a big hit for me it really really helped me attract people's attention so then, been doing that for quite a while, and then, um, yeah, that's pretty much how my life was, like, wake up early in the morning, uh, to get dropped off at Burger King, take the bus that's right by Burger King, and then take that all the way to the South Hill Mall Train Center, and then take another bus and go all the way to the Pelop Station, and then take the Sounder Train, and then go all the way up to the end, which is King Street Station, and then across the street, and then International District, either take a bus or a link light rail and they either go to uh, Westlake Station or University Street. Actually, no, 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 no. Before, um, before street performing in the Metro Tunnel, then I would go to the market and then mark ahead uh, what time, which now I know has to be the earliest one unless someone had marked first and then I can mark second, whatever. And then I'd, I'd take a picture of it with my cell phone just in case someone, some dickhead decides to rip it out or whatever. And then I play in the Metro Tunnel for about three hours, dealing with lots and lots of commuters who are trying to get to work. 99% of them are fuckheads, so fuck all of you. You guys don't mean anything in my life. And then uh, once I get done with there, then I go to the Pike Place Market and then play there for a few hours. And then maybe if I'm feeling good or if I'm feeling desperate, then I will go back to either Westlake Station or University Street Station and then try street performing there during the evening rush hour. I personally think that the evening rush hour is worse than afternoon rush hour because, I mean, 
See, that's the thing. When it comes to people, you just don't know. You just don't know. You don't know if they're more desperate on going to work on time, or if they're more desperate on trying to get home as soon as possible. I mean, even, even right now, I have that mentality state that once I'm done with street performing and I pack everything up, then I hustle to the buses so that I can like quickly get to the sounder train. So I'm like completely zoned out and then I get the feeling of tunnel vision, just like look straight ahead and then don't look back, don't stop for anything unless it's like an actual emergency, but just keep going until I get to the train so I can get out of Seattle. So I guess I can see where that comes in and then early in the morning, I mean, I don't know, everyone's different, but most people, you know, are not generous. That's how much uh, my life was during the winter time. And then um, before Christmas Eve, on December 16th, on a Saturday of 2017, Lindsay Sterling had her Warmer in the Winter concert in Seattle at the Paramount Theater at 8 p.m. And that was the day that she came up to me in person. And if I might provide a link in the description below, if I decide to upload this video, then that link will instantly take you to her, uh, the video where she came up to me and then was recording me while I was playing her song, Crystal Ice. And believe me, that was a whole different experience that I've ever, ever had, like ever in my entire life. That was probably like my best moment ever in my life. I, I can't think of anything at the top of my head that bests that. Besides the fact that I met Alex and that he changed my life. I think that is number one. And then meeting with Lindsey Sterling is uh, second best. I'm not really sure. But that was absolutely fucking insane. And kind of speechless right now because it's just so amazing. So then, um... You know, Christmas season is over, New Year's season is over, and then so I thought, okay, uh, holiday season is over, so now it's going to be the dead of the winter time, so. Also, don't even get me started on playing Westlake Station or University Street Station during the weekend. Actually, no. Westlake Station is busy during the weekends, but University Street Station on the weekends, oh my god, it is just so empty inside because... Nobody works during that time, and University Street doesn't have any tourist attraction. It's just a bunch of, like, office buildings, financial district, and whatever. Westlake Station at least has, like, shopping malls or whatever, and Westlake Station itself has direct access to the monorail, which where a lot of people take. And then, so therefore, um, yeah, there were just, like, god, winter time back then was such dark times. This kind of get me like discouraged on what summertime is gonna be like, or if I'm gonna do good during the summertime. And then I missed playing in the Seattle Center so much. There has been like really good weather, and then like on a day off, I like visit there, and then I see that there's like nobody there. Maybe like a few people pass by, and whatever. And then in the Seattle Center, there is a Chinese man who plays an urhu instrument. Um, but it's so empty, I thought, yeah, it's not going to be worth it. After playing in the market and Metro Tunnel for a long time, I wanted to try one new thing and actually bring my electric violin and that small amp back there. And then, yeah, there we go. And that small amp. And then actually try out uh, the University of Washington Station because you are allowed to use your electric instrument and amp at a designated area where on the wall, there is like a metal plate with a, a black star design. And that is a an area for busking. So then I tried over there. And man, was I furious. And there was a lot of people that passed by too. And what makes it even worse is that when you're playing and then the people walk past by you and ignore you and don't tip you. And then when they go up the escalator and then they stare down at you, I'm like, fuck you. Like, are you fucking kidding me right now you're not showing any sort of generosity towards me so why the fuck are you staring at me you pissed fucker whatever bitch mm -hmm. that makes me super angry to think about right now like super angry 
then I was super fed enough with that bullshit, and then so therefore I um, gave up. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm just gonna go to the Seattle Center, and then you know it's been months since I played there, so I might as well do like a 30 minute experiment to see how much I can make. And then that 30 minutes turned into one hour. And then that one hour turned into two hours. There was so less, like, not, not soulless, so less amount of people. Like, there was, like, barely just a few amount of people that was in Seattle Center. But, oh my god, the percentage of how many people were being generous towards me. Just the amount of generous people, the percent was more, way more. The New University Street Station. I actually made more in the Seattle Center, and I was there in the Seattle Center less than in the University of Washington State. With how many, like, few people there are. Oh my god. So then, that's when I decided maybe my time in the market uh, in the bus station is up. Then I started, you know, coming to the Seattle Center more often with my electric violin, and with that tiny little amp right over there. Yeah, and then, um, you know, the more I came to the Seattle Center, or actually, no, the more spring arrived, now there are a few street performers that, you know, hibernated, or, you know, doesn't usually play during the wintertime, is now coming back. Uh, there is a middle-aged man who plays a guitar, uh, jazz guitar, mostly, and he mostly plays like covers and originals of his outside and you know he'll play jazz guitar so therefore um you know me and him started to bond during the springtime and it was like really really nice and then so that's like been the same repeating pattern now no more market i, I stopped playing at the market until like around april i think it was april or march i'm not sure but I thought on a good day, I'll be at the, mm, excuse me, I'll be at the Seattle Center, and then on rainy days, I'll be at the Pike Place Market where the market actually has like an overhang shelter, or I'm like underneath the roof, and you know, if I want to play in the Metro Tunnel, then you know, I'm underground, so I'm protected from the wind slash rain. At the market, I'm only protected from the rain, not the wind necessarily. So, and then it comes to a point where... I stopped coming to the market. I bought myself a new permit, and maybe if I can show you guys what the permit looks like. It is inside my case in my acoustic violin case. I bought myself a new permit that will last up until uh, August. I'm not sure if you guys... Oh yeah, you guys can see it perfectly. I, I, I have this uh, book covering the screen because I don't want to get distracted looking down on my face instead of looking at the camera. That's why I'm covering the screen, but it doesn't obstruct the camera. Um, this permit, I bought it for, you know, $30 for one year. And so I, I bought myself a new one. Turns out I didn't need to use this because ever since I bought the permit, I haven't been coming to the mar or street performing at the market since. And then so now every day it's just been a, a reoccurrence of waking up, uh, taking the sounder train this time to... Oh my god. And don't even get me started on like transportation. Because holy crap, it was so tedious sometimes. Yeah, I guess I could talk about transportation. So, what did we mention before? Uh, during my time in the wintertime was... Okay, this is between November to May when my parents... Uh, can now drop me off at the Pelp station and then pick me back from the Pelp station, so that cuts off two buses. But during November to May, bus from Burger King, go to the South Hill Mall, and then take the bus from South Hill Mall all the way to the Pelp station. And I'll take the Sounder train all the way down to King Street Station, and then walk across the street from 4th Avenue, and then go to International District Chinatown, and then go down to the platform, and I'll either take a bus or a Link Light Rail that'll take me either to University Street Station or Westlake Station. And then that's where I do my um, street performing over there, and then I just walk over to the market, and then I walk back to the train station, and then Link Light Rail or Underground Bus, and then Sounder, and then go back, and then um, take two more buses from Pale Station to the South Hill Mall, and then South Hill Mall back to uh, the bus stop, this time right by my street 
and then I'll do a 15 minute walk. Sometimes I'm crazy of a guy to carry my uh, my regular acoustic violin case. So it's just my backpack and my acoustic violin case and I'll walk from my house all the way to South Hill Mall, which if I walk like medium pace, maybe it'll take me 50 minutes, slow pace 55, fast pace 45 and whatever, just so that I can get there early. Um, or, you know, just so that um, I can say to my parents that, oh, I can... I even forgot, like, I had to make up an excuse why I brought my violin at Burger King every day or leave it there. And I think the reason was I was making an excuse to my parents that I was giving violin lessons to one of the employees or something. God, it was just so weird back then. My strategy was so messy back then that now it's just so easy. So yeah, that's the transportation back then, during my underground station slash market days, and now when I go to the Seattle Center, um, I never took the monorail every day, so then therefore, uh, once I take the two buses down to, or once I take the train to King Street, then I take a bus that's nearby over there, that'll take me through downtown, and will drop me off on 3rd and Vine Street, where then I'll just walk a few blocks up to the Seattle Center. Whereas right now, I would take the monorail to the Seattle Center instead. So, um, you know, taking the bus from 5th and Jackson, going through downtown, now that can get pretty risky because you're at street level right now, so then the, we pass by places that are littered with uh, druggies. Uh, homeless people, maybe people with mental illnesses, that will end up getting on the bus for free, thanks to the drivers who pity them or something. And then we'll have cases of just like either obnoxious people or dangerous people where a guy threw a metal pipe across a bus. Man, those were absolute dark times and I absolutely hated it. Sometimes I would just uh, ride the bus. If I was to leave Seattle Center, I would ride the bus and then just get dropped off on Pine Street and walk across the street and then go underground instead, which was still risky, you know, considering it's a public bus on street level. And then um, during the springtime, some, sometimes I will have a friend of mine that I used to work with at Jack in the Box to pick me up from my home and then take me down to the station because the station is right by his workplace. And then um, I'll let him know what time I'll get there so that he can pick me up or I can wait in the office for him. Or if I like arrive late then I can meet him in the mall and then he can take me back home easily. So I don't have to, I don't have to walk with my small amp this time and my electric violin and backpack. 15 minute walk my street. He can drop me off there instead, you know, nice and simple. And then, 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 uh, summertime came. And Alex Rivers, the main person that helped me street perform, came back to Seattle on June 2nd, uh, with a friend of his that was staying with him for two weeks in a hotel. But Alex has returned. So therefore, oh boy, summertime was absolutely crazy because you have more street performers that come out of the state sometimes. Like Alex, for example, he lives in Vegas, in Nevada, and then he came out of state to come here. And there's even other street performers that come out of the city or out of the state and then will come to Seattle Center to street perform there. And then so therefore the competition is very, very high. So therefore it's all about High commitment, high motivation, high dedication. If you're uh, not struggling, if you're slacking, then you're not going to win. You're not going to get the spot first or whatever. So then I made sure that I get dropped off over there early in the morning so I can get to Seattle Center early, maybe at earliest at like 8.30, sometimes 7.30 in the morning if I really wanted to. 
Oh yeah. Also, oh man, I didn't even talk about transportation during um um, um weekend because weekend there are no sounder trains available. So then, therefore. And plus, my friend uh, wasn't working on the weekends either, so he can't take me back home by driving me there. So therefore, I would take two buses down to the station, take the 578 that goes northbound. Once I'm done street performing, then I go southbound to the 578. And there's been times where, by the time I arrive at the Pillup station, I would have missed the local transit bus that would take me up to South Hill Mall because... When you're going through the interstate, there could be traffic and you could possibly miss your bus. So therefore, I had to wait one hour just for another bus to come by and pick me up, which is a pain in the ass. And I don't want to keep stopping by McDonald's to kill time while eating over there. So therefore, then I had to just like take the same bus going south, but stop at Federal Way instead. And then, um, therefore, it'll give me 15 more minutes before the bus leaves there, and then I can take that bus that'll take me up to South. It was just so fucking crazy. I kept making so many of these strategies. On Sundays, when the buses are so limited, I would take the Route 4 bus that's right by Burger King, and then go all the way down to State Route 5, 12 Park and Ride, take the 574, and then go up, and then get dropped off there, and then take the Link Light Rail all the way to Seattle. It was just so fucking crazy. So then, you know, when summertime came, I told my parents that I have a much better job, but I never, I didn't tell them it was street performing. Uh, I told them that it was me and a small orchestra group um, doing gigs, and that's how we make money, but it's much better than fast food. So now that I'm actually giving them more money, um, now, you know, they're super kind enough to take me to the pill station, and, you know, because I can fully pay for the gas now. So now, as of right now, this is my commute. My parents drop me off at the Pell Station, take the Sounder train all the way up to King Street Station, walk across 4th Avenue, take the Link Light Rail or Underground Bus Tunnel, get off at Westlake Station, ride the elevator up to the monorail platform, and then take the monorail over the street level, because, you know, you're three stories high, to the Seattle Center, and then boom, I'm right there. And like I said, my record was probably an hour and a half or an hour and 20 minutes with the sounder train. And then it's the same It's the same exact thing back. Monorail back, elevator down to Westlake Station, or I climb the stairs because the elevator is so slow. And then go to Westlake Station, and then, oops. And then take the bus or Link Light Rail to International District, and then ride the train back home, and then get picked up by my parents, and then come back home right now, right here. So much easier than before. Weekends, uh, just a little bit different. You know, take me, my parents will take me to the Pell station, take the 578 bus instead, that'll take me to Seattle. Get dropped off on 4th and Pine, and then uh, climb up the stairs to the monorail and then go there, and then come back to the monorail, and then, um, now this is where things get a little bit tricky, because the bus routes are completely different than the train, of course, so you have to know exactly where the bus starts. The bus leaves its first stop on uh, Fairview and Thomas, it gets really confusing, and then Boren Avenue or whatever, and then now it's on Stewart Street, and then it'll make its stops on 9th Avenue, which is right by Taco Del Mar, and then 7th Avenue, which is usually the one that I take. Because when I ride the monorail back, it is at Westlake Center Mall, so then I just uh, go inside Nordstrom and then just like relax for a bit before my bus comes, use the bathroom, whatever. And then I'll walk from Nordstrom to 7th and Stewart, which is just only a few blocks. And then take that bus um, through downtown, through 2nd Avenue, and then makes its last downtown stop at 2nd and Jackson. And then it'll go on to Federal Way Transit Center, uh, Auburn Station. Thumb their station and then finally pay off station. Get picked up by my parents and then just go back home. That may seem like a lot, but with an ORCA card, ORCA stands for One Regional Card for All, putting a monthly pass on it for, um, now this was before, 
Oh man, see, I'm leaving out so many details, like so, like I'm telling you, my story is big. My story is absolutely fucking big because I haven't even mentioned about the prices of the transportation that I take, that I took before. Um, 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 um. back in the day when I used to work at Burger King, I would, um, on the days that I would visit to Seattle, I would pay for the youth price even though I was 21 years old. So, for Pierce Transit, instead of paying $5 for an all day pass, I paid $2.75. For the Sound Transit that'll go across counties, you know, the longer distance bus, I will pay $2.75 for the youth fare. In, uh, instead of the 375 multi-county fare adult and then there's also such thing as a one county fare as well like federal way and seattle they're both within king county so in that case instead of paying 275 adult one county fare i would pay 150 youth fare one county fare it, it's just so, like it's so confusing and i thought that was like a cheap way of going to seattle and then you know coming back Monorail, uh, I still have my military ID, so I actually still use it for military discount. So uh, back then it was $225 uh, for round trip, and now it rolls up to $250 for a round trip. So then, you know, that adds up to like what, $11, I think. I don't know. It's been a long time. An absolute long time. So then I would like limit myself with that. And then that's when I discovered the Orca card. You can put a monthly pass on it. Just, oh yeah, in the Sounder Train too. Cost $4.75 from PL up to Seattle. And then Seattle back. And then I paid uh, $3.50 for the youth fare. I got caught by the fare enforcement that I was underage. And I had to pay a $124 fine. But it kind of feels a little shameful. But after that... This way I discovered the Orca card has a thing called a regional monthly pass where you select the value of the per trip value of your most frequent, most expensive uh, trip and then take that amount times that by 36 or 18 round trips and you get this amount. So therefore you can have unlimited rights of anything that allows you to tap your orca, which is pretty much almost everything in uh, Washington, at least in the Puget Sound area. And therefore, um, unlimited rides, as long as the per trip value cost at or under that certain amount. In my example, I take the Sounder train frequently from Puyallup all the way to Seattle, and then Seattle back. And that costs uh, $4.75 for adult fare. The reason why I love the Sounder Train because not only it's faster, but it also has a bathroom, you know, fast, and then bathroom in case I have an emergency. It's got a place that you can I can fill my water bottle, which is good tasting water. You know, absolutely tastes like nothing. That's the way water is supposed to be. And it's got electrical outlets if I want to charge my laptop or you know my phone or whatever. And then for the Sound Transit buses, it's got none of those. It's not as fast as the sound train, it doesn't have the bathroom, it doesn't have outlets, and it doesn't have a place for you to fill up your water and whatever. And so therefore, like I said, $4.75 is now my per trip value. So take that times 36. So now, all I have to do is pay $171 a month on my Orca card for that monthly pass, and boom, for one month, just $171, I have Unlimited rides, unlimited public transportation, anything from the Sound of Trains, Sound Transit buses, Pierce Transit, Metro Transit, anything that's like good on the Orca. You can even get yourself like one of this book and then it'll explain everything. It does not work on the monorail, however. The monorail is its own separate fare, which I will talk about later on. Therefore, $171 for one month for unlimited rides. I think that's a pretty really good fucking deal compared to driving all the way from home to Seattle and then having to find parking and then having to pay for gas and then having to worry about insurance, car payment, tabs, and if you get into an accident, you're responsible as well for damages unless you pay the insurance or whatever, whereas public transportation, 
if you get into an accident and as long as you're okay, the passengers are not responsible for the damages of the bus and whatever, and you could just like sit back and relax, maybe even take a nap while the bus is like moving along. Even though it's slower, I, I still prefer public transportation. At least if you're in a safe one, like the Sounder Train. The Sounder Train mostly consists of commuters who just wants to go work and then who just wants to go back, mind their own business, decently decent people, instead of loud, rude, obnoxious behavior, or like mentally diseased or druggies that get inside the regular buses. Sometimes even the Sound Transit buses as well, you'll get those once in a while. And I have this, like, few guys who smell like marijuana and absolutely makes me fucking sick to my stomach. Son of a bitch, fuck them. So therefore, $171 a month for public transportation, not bad at all. Absolutely not bad at all. So summertime, we're getting back to summertime with Alex coming back. So me and him have been playing for a bit. He even stayed in my house for about a week. That's a whole new topic, but I just want to get into the gist of things. Me and him have been playing together, and then um, he convinced me to get that big amp, which has now done me really good justice. I bought that big amp on June 26th of last year, and like I said, it's been doing me really good justice compared to that amp back there. So then um, me and him would play together with our amps uh, facing towards each other, so it creates like a surround sound. I have my case open over here, and he has his case open over there, so that it'll convince people that it's like tip one another. And then it got, it got to a point where it was just like so exhausting, whatever, so we decided that we have Ido, the guitar playing guy, you know, be at his spot first, and then I'll take over when he's done, and then so once I'm done, or actually when Ido's playing, I'm at the other side playing, when he's done, then I move over to this side and I play for a couple or maybe a few hours, and that's when Alex comes uh, from the place that he's like uh, roommating with, and then he'll take over once I'm done, pretty much. And that's how it's been going. And then uh, we have that other street performer named Publio who came from Spain. Now, Publio is a street performer that travels all around the world, uh, plays his guitar, but in such a, like, in such a way that it's completely unique that, you know, slapping the guitar, but amazing chord structures as well. And he, has perfect pitch like I do, but even more so has an amazing, amazing sense of uh, music theory. So he is absolutely a monster in a good way when it comes to like music playing and everything. He was only with us for about a few weeks uh, before he moved down to Portland. So, you know, as much as I love Publio, the, uh, for the four of us to share spots in that one garden area, or at least like trying to, was kind of difficult, but it's everything's fine at the end. So then that's how life was during the summertime after Publio left. Ido plays there while I'm playing over here. Ido's done, then I move over to that spot and then play over there, and then Alex would come and then do that, and that's been a forever going on cycle until uh, September, and that's when, uh, middle of September, that's when Alex moved back to Vegas, so now it was just me and Ido, and maybe a few other street performers that I wanted to share spots with in October, and then uh, same thing happened in November, and now we move on to the present day, which is right now. Today, June 25th, 9.09 p.m., just two hours earlier, or even three hours earlier, Two hours earlier, just got back from street performing in the Seattle Center, and it was, you know, way, way better than playing at the Pike Place Market. That is my life right now, and I am incredibly, incredibly grateful. My face doesn't look like it, but maybe, like, I've been showing off, like, so much passion with... I absolutely love what I'm doing, way more passion than being in the military. And of course, fast food. Anything is better than fast food, really. But street performing, I can never be more luckier, and I'm absolutely grateful. Thanks to Alex. Thanks to Lindsay Sterling, of course, because, you know, I play her songs most of the time. 
all the time, pretty much. Pretty much like any other, uh, thanks to all the street performers that I was with in the Metro Tunnel area, Pike Place Market, and most importantly, the Seattle Center, where I have truly bonded with some people. Some people I just consider, you know, meh, acquaintances, but there are lots of friends that I made as I was like street performing. And I can't be more grateful for you guys to like help me out to where I am today, which is at a really, really good point in my life. Probably like the best moment, like my best um, part of my life. And I know it's going to get better as the year comes by. 2008, uh, 2017, you know, in general was a roller coaster of knowing how to get to Seattle and then having to discover Alex and then discover street performing. 2018 was just work, 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 work. But I never street performed during the winter time. Now, 2019, or, you know, towards the end of 2018, then I still stayed in the Seattle Center and then still do way better than the market slash Metro Tunnel. So then moving on to 2019, it's going to get better than 2018. I know that for sure. If 2019 is worse than 2018, then I'm going to jump off the Columbia Center and... Pfft, no, I'm just kidding. But I know that 2019 is going to be better. So, I know I skipped so many details. Like, so many details on, you know, interacting with people who, you know, came up to me when they discovered me through Lindsay's Instagram. I didn't even talk about, like, trying to play at the Pacific Place Mall, or, like, me and Alex, you know, riding the train together and bus together, or, like, you know, sleeping together for about a week before he had to find, you know, I, there's, like, so many, many, many details that I've left out. Even, even, um, you know, events, special events in the Seattle Center, like, uh, Folk Life Festival, or, um, the Pride Festival, and uh, Bite of Seattle, those were major, major events that took place over there. And that really, really helped me out, but increased the level of competition. Like, there's just, like, so many more. Now, I don't keep saying thank you guys for watching and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there's been, like, so many more details. And if I can, like, remember anything else on the top of my head. Um, special events, like, or, uh, folk life. Oh, when I started learning how to dance like Lindsay Sterling. You know, I've, I've been watching her videos for a long, long time, so I pretty much get the gist of, like, how she moves around while playing the violin. It's all muscle memory, and it's all, you know, memory inside here as well. If you memorize a song, then it's easier to do two things at once. You know, I learned how to moonwalk a while ago. So then I started dancing, you know, during uh, Folk Life Festival, which was Memorial Day weekend, and then I just continued to get better and better and better and better, losing weight, until I injured my knee, and then I can still walk. I just can't really dance as much. You know, that's all that. Anyways, I am incredibly happy. Like, incredibly happy. Compared to many years ago. I was in a dark place of fast food and army. But now I am incredibly happy. And I can't wait to see what many more years to come of street performing will do for me. And I, I just absolutely can't wait. So thank you guys so much again. We'll see you next time.